me now the journalist Nabila Ramdani. Um, let's talk about what President Hollande has said. What do you think the impact will be of his comments? Well, I think Hollande's uh, speech today to uh, uh, France's ambassador is a further example of diplomatic pressure in the face of, of mass murder. And as somebody who speaks to uh, Syrian opposition fighters on the ground, this would come as very little practical help uh, to them. And there are very good reasons, of course, uh, for Western countries not to intervene. We're dealing with a very volatile part of the world. But Hollande's uh, rhetoric uh, is seen as uh, you know, having very little impact on the ground, not least uh, because he's, uh, for example, uh, calling for the Syrian opposition to form a transitional and indeed a provisional uh, government that France would recognize. But the reality is that the Syrian opposition is still badly fragmented. It is plagued by infighting and uh, divisions. And it is far from clear whether such an entity could indeed be formed. So a provisional government simply isn't an option because you cannot imagine the actual makeup of it, given the differences that already exist in the opposition groups? Very much so. We've heard the, recently the head of the Syrian National Council who made uh, statements claiming that he will work uh, and his group will work on uh, forming uh, such an entity. But you have al also several uh, opposition uh, groups uh, which are claiming to make uh, exactly uh, you know, similar plans. Another reason why Hollande's statements were unsatisfactory, and there I say distasteful, is when he called for, uh, when he said that the use by Assad of chemical weapons would be a good reason uh, to uh, trigger foreign intervention. Uh, and I have to say that people on the ground say that uh, uh, this rather warped logic implies that uh, the use by Assad of helicopter gunships and indeed sectarian and civilian militias to kill people is not somehow a good reason enough for mm. foreign intervention. Because, I mean, that echoes, doesn't it, comments that uh, both President Obama and David Cameron have made in recent times specifically about chemical weapons and how, in their estimation, that would change the way they react to what's going on there. Indeed, uh, but what uh, people on the ground would claim, and especially uh, rebel opposition fighters, is that uh, surely uh, 20,000 people uh, dying so far, uh, a, a horrific humanitarian crisis with 80,000 refugees who have fled the country, uh, uh, one million people displaced within uh, the country itself, and you know, a, a, a lack of everything really, from electricity to running water, or people being killed even for uh, queuing for bread. Uh, surely that would, uh, should trigger some sort of, uh, perhaps a more forceful reaction from the international community. You talked about the fragmented nature of the opposition groups, um, many of whom, of course, are currently based outside uh, Syria. What about the nature of those actually fighting on the ground now? I mean, we've seen these claims today that the helicopter was shot down, not the first time something like that has happened. Do they, to you, look more organised actually inside Syria than they have been before? I think the opposition within Syria is far more complex than it was at the beginning of the uprising. We had, you know, it was a straightforward, peaceful demonstrations by uh, activists. Now the makeup of the opposition is far more complex. Uh, you have uh, jihadi groups, which are by far a minority, but also uh, opposition fighters who are uh, collecting funds, uh, weapons, uh, and equipment uh, from foreign government and indeed intelligence to perhaps be more organized to fight a, a far mightier uh, regime. And the uh, uh, shooting down of a helicopter, an army helicopter today, will come uh, to boost the morale of, uh, of a struggling uh, opposition. Okay. Uh, Nabil Ramdani, thank you very much indeed for coming in.